Amen. The goal for the song tonight, keep the faith. Confirmation before you get up here. Praise the Lord that He gave it. Amen. Sometimes when you first asked to share something, you said, yeah, I believe I have something. You pray and you seek God and you're studying. You believe you have something and then about the time comes to get up here. Like, I don't know. Man, the devil starts working and you don't want to get up there and make a fool out of yourself. And everything else, but we're going to do what the Lord has us to do. Amen. Ruth, the book of Ruth tonight. Thank the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord. We'll begin reading verse number seven, but we want to give a little bit of context here. There was a famine in Bethlehem uh, where Elimelech, a man named Elimelech, was from. And he decided to leave Bethlehem. He seems to be a wealthy man from the biblical context. And due to the famine, he decided to relocate to Moab. We're not going to get into all the ramifications of that tonight. But while he was in Moab, his sons got married. And married two women from that country. In the process of time, Elimelech dies, and consequently, so did his two sons. So that all that is left is his wife Naomi and the two daughters in law, Ruth and Orpah. And after Naomi hears that the famine is over, she decides to return. Bethlehem, and that's where we're going to cut in tonight, verse number 7. Start with verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have, have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou, where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded. To go with her, then she left, speaking unto her. In verse 10, 
both of them, Orpah and Ruth, said they would go with Naomi. They both verbally said they would go. And then Naomi proceeds, proceeds to give a litany of reasons why they ought not to go. And I believe as a means of testing to see where their true inclinations were. <clears throat> and upon hearing all of the reasons, they were quite logical, quite rational. Upon hearing all the reasons, Orpah decides, I'm going home. But there was something different about Ruth. All right. The Bible says that Ruth clave unto Naomi. Now, mind you, Ruth had not been to Judah before, as far as we know. Whatever she knew of the people of Naomi, she knew from Naomi herself. And for whatever reason, Naomi saw some, or Ruth saw something beyond the ordinary. She saw that there was something more to Naomi than just going home. It was more than that. She saw God in Naomi. She saw that there was something in Naomi that was not ever going to be found in Moab. My God. She knew that if I'm going to have what Naomi has, then I have to go where Naomi goes and be a part of the people that Naomi is a part of. And despite all the reasons that were presented to her, Doubtless, Naomi in her heart would have loved to have some company. Doubtless, she, in the natural, it would have been so appealing to have Ruth and Orpah with her. That's all she had left. But she had to be sure that you know what you're doing. This is not a light matter. This is a serious decision. Because if you go with me and you start... Uh, worshiping the true God, but somewhere down the line, you turn back and you go back home. You're in far worse shape than if you just go back now. Right now. You're in far worse shape if you just, you might as well, just, it's better for you to not even know about some things. It's better for you to not even be exposed to some things than for you to come with me and be exposed to some things and then decide to change your mind. So you better be sure about what you're doing here. This isn't a joke. And after she's presented everything that Naomi gives her, she speaks in verse number 16. She says, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For where you go, that's where I'm going. Where you lodge, that's where I'm going to lodge. Where you die, that's where I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. Your people are going to be my people, and your God is going to be my God. Matter, the matter is settled. My God. And you know how you know the matter was settled? Naomi didn't talk to her no more about it. <laughs> Verse 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded. You weren't going to change Ruth's mind. I have nothing more to say to you. I, I can't appeal. I know your mind is made up. There's no telling you to do otherwise. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Our thought tonight, don't change your mind. Amen. <laughs> don't change your mind. Mm -hmm. And understand with the caveat tonight that if God has shown it to you, you don't change your mind. Change your mind. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about tonight. Amen. Amen. Just to make that abundantly clear. If God has shown it to you, don't change your mind. Your mind. Now, if you've been believing a lie, you need to change your mind. If you've been believing something that is in error, you need to change your mind. Right. Amen. If God has shown you it was an error, don't be obstinate or stubborn. Change your mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if God shows you something, don't Amen. change Amen. your mind. Amen. Narrow mindedness is looked upon in our world today with a degree of scorn. Mm -hmm. It seems that any time someone calls another narrow-minded, it is most certainly with a negative connotation. They're not complimenting you. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Narrow-minded <coughs> is something today that is looked upon as if you are to some degree intolerant, 
You're bigoted, you don't have a very good perspective of the world, you don't have enough worldly sense, and they will even tell you that you need to be more open-minded. Yep. But I believe tonight that when God shows you something, there is only one way to see it. Amen, amen. <laughs> and you better be narrow-minded about it. My God, my God. You most certainly should be narrow-minded about it. You have no other options. Amen. And if people would be in a much better place tonight if they had not let their minds be subjected to something other than what God had already shown them. Amen. There are some things that are not even worth lending our mind to. Right, you understand that before you ever sin, before anyone ever goes into apostasy, before anyone ever makes a grave error, they had to think about it first. My God. There was something that happened. Now, they may not have thought very well about it. Amen. Amen. They may not have thought it through, but the devil works through the mind. Yes, he does. The devil works through the mind. Yes. And I'll tell you that it is proof in, in Genesis and Adam in the case of Eve. Yes. Amen. The devil had only one thing to work with. Yes. He only had one thing to work with, and that was her mind. Yes. He, had, he didn't have Hollywood. All right. he, he didn't have the television. He didn't have social media. He didn't have an actress. He didn't have an actor. He didn't have a sports star. He had nothing. What could the devil have worked with? There was no. There was nothing to really tempt her with. She had one command, and the devil has to make her disobey that one command. I'd be racking my brain. He had her. He had access to her mind, though. And once he, and once he got access to her mind, she was cooked. And then she was cooked. Once she began to open her mind, and the Bible says when she saw, when she saw that the, that the tree was good for food, she saw what God showed her a little bit differently. We can shift our minds yeah. ever so slightly, amen, and make eternal decisions in doing so. Ruth was certain of one thing. I'm not leaving you, Naomi. I'm going to Judah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I may not know what this will all entail. I don't know what the future holds. All right. There's a lot of uncertainty. I probably will not get a husband. You read the custom? It wasn't the wife's, uh, the, the woman's side of the family that needed to raise up seed. Elimelech was dead. All right, so Ruth, uh, Naomi didn't have any men to give to Ruth. It wasn't the custom. So the likelihood of Ruth getting a husband was slim to none. The likelihood of her having this uh, comfortable, secure life in Judah, it, she was really probably rationally opting for a life of poverty, absolute poverty. But despite all of that, despite the uncertainty of it all, she said, you can't change my mind about this. My God. You cannot. Listen, God showed me something. Mm. My God. I've seen some things. I've witnessed some things. And I know one thing for certain. You're not talking me out of it. Yes. You're not talking me out of it. People will present to you many options in this yeah. life. Yeah. Amen. People yeah. will try to present you with one rational and logical argument after another. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'll tell you, they will make a lot of sense. Amen. Naomi, what she was saying was right. Mm -hmm. There was really nothing off in what the, 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 the prognosis was bleak. Amen. The outcome looked quite despair, despairing. Amen. But... You could not. Her, she was steadfastly minded. Listen, you know why some people keep bothering you and talking to you about some things? Amen. Because you haven't sent the message that you're steadfastly minded. Yes, my God. My God. Amen. When they know where you stand. Yeah. Amen. There is a certain, there is a certain way you can present something in the spirit of God. Right. There is a certain way you can present something. They'll bother you no more about it. Yes, amen. There's some conversations yes. they will never have with you again if you can take a definite mind and show that you are steadfast minded. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to deal with a couple of things tonight in the brief time that we have. We want to deal, first of all, don't change your mind as an individual before God. Oh my. Amen. We have a responsibility individually before God. We are individuals before God. I understand we are collective. We are the body of Christ. Amen. But there is a, a, a stand. There is an experience that you have to have as an individual. <coughs> My God. Amen. You can't lean on the saints. You can't lean on your family. Amen. There are some things. Amen. That you have to have for yourself. Yes. My amen. God. There comes a time, young people. Amen. When you are going to have to have this thing for you. Amen. Amen. You are going to have to be steadfastly minded for yourself. You 
can't lean on anyone else. Amen. And you're going to have to send the message loud and clear to the devil, to the world, and to anyone. Amen. That you're not changing my mind. Amen. My God. My God. When God gives light. Appreciate the testimony tonight. Talking about the light. When God gives light, you must. You have no option. You must measure. My God. You must measure. You must be. A, God may not have shown so and so that. May not have shown somebody else that. But if God showed you that, you become responsible at that very moment. Yes. Amen. Amen. And don't let someone talk you out of it. Too many people have let so-called good saints talk them out of what God was showing them to do. Yes. Yes. Amen. If God shows you, there's no more council sessions. Come on. Oh, my. Amen. There's no more prayer meetings. My God. Amen. Don't get your best friend and run it by them. Yeah. Amen. If God shows you, amen, the council sessions are over, the prayer meeting, you might need a prayer meeting to, to follow through with what God showed you. Amen. But the negotiation phase, there is no negotiation. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely gone at that point. Acts 21, please. Acts 21. As an individual before God, don't let someone change your mind. Oh my God. Amen. There are going to be things. There are going to be complexities. There are going to be nuances. There are going to be things that are tailored to your personal relationship with God that are not for anybody else but you. There's some things that God shows you and he may not put it on anyone else. There may be some things that God shows you to cut off. Amen. And he may not show anybody else to cut it off. Amen. There might be some things that God is working, some lines He's working with you on. Amen. And that is the will of God for you. And if you do otherwise and you try to justify yourself because someone else isn't doing it, you're off. Oh my God. Oh. My Lord. Acts chapter 21, please. <laughs> Verse number 10. And as we tarried there, many days there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Somebody got a hold of the Holy Ghost and had a message. Mm. Amen. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle. Well, it was Paul's girdle. And the message from the Holy Ghost said that there's going to be some things that happen to the man that owns this girdle. And shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things... Both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Paul, don't go. Paul, don't go. Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Just don't go to Jerusalem. This man said he had, this is from the Holy Ghost. All right, but yet people were trying to talk him out of going to Jerusalem. Don't go, Paul. We, and, and good intentions. They didn't want to see Paul die. They, didn't want to, they, knew what, they knew what was at stake. They knew what would happen. This was likely goodbye. This was very likely goodbye to Paul. Paul, don't go. Please don't go. People will pull out the heartstrings. And then people will try to use sentiment. And we love you and we appreciate you. We don't want you. And they no doubt they, they mean well. They mean well. But you gotta be an individual before God. My God. And you gotta be an individual. Paul, please stay. We love you, Paul. We appreciate you, Paul. Don't go anywhere, Paul. But Paul, let's see what he said. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep? And to break my heart. Look, I love you guys too. I appreciate you all too. But I'm ready. He said, for I am ready. Not to just be bound. Not to just be taken into custody. But also to die at Jerusalem. For the name of the Lord Jesus. And verse 14. And when he would not be persuaded. He would not be persuaded. You were not going to talk Paul out of this. This is what he had to do. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased. They stopped talking to Paul. Amen. They stopped going round and round with Paul. He gave them, he, 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 he settled it in such a way that you can sit here and talk all night long, but you're not persuading me to do otherwise. My God. Amen. You're not persuading me to do it. Listen, this is the will of God. For me not to do this would be put me outside the will of God, despite how much you say you love me. Despite how much you say you appreciate me. For me to do otherwise would put my individual soul outside of the will of God. This is what the Holy Ghost said. This is what the Holy Ghost said. Verse number 10. It says, sorry, verse number 11. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Paul would not be persuaded. There reaches a point where there is no sense of speaking of some things any longer. <coughs> Amen. There's no sense in speaking anything on any, on, of it any longer. 1 Kings 13. We want to move through this tonight. 1 Kings 13. We're not holding you long. 1 Kings 13. Probably one of the most tragic incidents in the Bible. Amen. We must understand. And the quicker we realize this the more successful we will be. Amen. <laughs> that, see, God is not going to waste his time, first of all. Amen. If you wonder why God is not showing you some things and revealing some things to you and you seem to be in the spiritual, a spiritual dullness over your experience, it's probably because you need to get your mind fixed. Right. See, God is not going to work with a double-minded person. Mm. A person who has... Amen. Affections for the natural. Affections for the world. And also, and, and that's a legitimate option. That's on the table. And then also, I'll, I'll see what God presents. No. God works with those who put 100% on Him. Amen. His will completely. Amen. And there will be a spiritual dryness over you. Amen. There will be a spiritual dryness in your experience until you settle this thing. Amen. Until you have an unchangeable mind. You have to have an unchangeable mind. You have to be unbending. You have to be unrelenting. Amen. You have to be unyielding. Amen. And that you have to have such a mindset that it is the gospel, that it is my salvation, and everything else is a long way second behind that. Amen. Amen. 1 Kings 13. To give also the context. God sent a prophet to cry against Jeroboam. Jeroboam had just built an altar. Really a golden calf in a temple there in Bethel. Wasn't the one in Jerusalem. Amen. He was burning incense at that altar. And God sent the prophet to talk to Jeroboam. And to cry against the altar that Jeroboam had set up in Bethel. And the king stretched forth his hand and was wanting somebody to lay hold on the prophet. And God dried, the Bible says it dried up his hand. That he could not pull it back in. He then asked the prophet for prayer. <laughs> and the prophet prays for him, and his hand is restored. Let's go down to verse. So after that, the king wants to have him over for dinner. Wants to have some refreshments, all right, and sit down and hang out with the prophet. Verse number 7. 1 Kings 13, verse 7. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto, unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, there's no offer that you can make me. There's no offer you can make me. You can offer me half your house. You can offer me half the kingdom. You can give me money, whatever. It's not going to change my mind. All right, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged by me... By the word, for so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again, by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. But it's about to get tricky. He did well. You're not going to change my mind. God showed me this. I'm standing on it. I'm clear. <laughs> I'm going forth. And he did the right thing. But the devil's got more tricks up his sleeve. Amen. You better watch. Amen. It doesn't matter how good it looks. Oh, it doesn't matter how well it's packaged. I don't care who presents it. I don't care if they say they're a prophet or not a prophet. If God's shown you differently, that's the way it is. <laughs> that's the way it is. Amen. They can come preaching. They can say they line this up. They got this from God. If God showed you differently, then it's it's not that. Good, brother. Amen. You you have to have this. You have to have this settled. I believe that we are living in the most deceptive time on the face of the planet. We are living in the most deceptive time on the face of the planet. Amen. I cannot think of a time, amen, where I have been more burdened, amen, about where the church of God is. As you look across the landscape today, amen, as you look across the landscape today, there are very, very few. There is a dearth in the land of people who are unbending and unyielding when it comes to this gospel. Uh, yes, uh, You're not going to find uh, it. You're not going to find it. You can search across this land. Amen. I also can't think of a time when I'm more encouraged. Amen. I can't think of a time when I'm more encouraged either. Amen. Because by the grace of God, I believe God is trying to separate. 
Amen. Amen. The ch the chaff from the wheat in this time. Amen. He's trying to get a people. Amen. That is uh, being uh, uh, furnished in the fire. Amen. That is being tried in the fire. That is being refined. Amen. That he can use. Amen. That will not change their mind. They will not back up. They're willing to stick out like a sore thumb. Amen. Do whatever it takes. Amen. To produce the approval of God. My God. My God. Amen. Let's read on here. Verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God. And found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me. And he bred. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also. As thou art. We're the same. Listen, there's some people, you're not the same. You're not the same. Amen. And that's just what some people, compromise tries to do, bring you down. We're the same. You're saved, I'm saved. You live free from sin, I live free from sin. You're, we teach sanctification, you teach sanctification. Right. Amen. That's just how deceptive it is today. Yeah. Amen. That's just how deceptive it is today. You better be an individual. That's true. You better be an individual before God. He said the word of the Lord said, no bread, no water, return a different way than the way you came. And I don't know why he was sitting under the oak. He probably should have kept walking. My <laughs> God. But I would say, I'm a prophet, you're a prophet. Thou shalt, he said unto me, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel <laughs> spake unto me. Mercy. We'll see what Paul says about that later. <laughs> By the word of the Lord, say, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. He was a liar. He lied. You know some people, if you were to get right down to it, they're lying to you. <sighs> we're not the same. Amen. We're not the same. And don't let someone who's to someone change your mind when they didn't hear from God at all. They're saying they heard from God. They heard from God. No, they didn't. And that people are going to be the undoing of many people. People are going to be the undoing of many people. There is nothing more dangerous than people. There is nothing more dangerous than people. They're influential. People are influential. People have influence. You get close to people. You get close to people. You form friendships with people. Amen. You let people influence you to, to probably to a degree that you don't even realize sometimes. Yeah. There go. Amen. But the greatest influence in your life has to be the Word of God. Amen. That has to trump everybody every time. Every time. Amen. What'd he do? Verse 19. So he went back with him. And did eat bread in his house and drank water. When I first read this account many years ago, I always felt bad for the man. I felt like, man, that was tricky. That was dirty. Yeah, that prophet lied to him. But you know what? We have such an obligation to do exactly what God tells us to do. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who presents it. It doesn't matter how fancy it's made up to be. Amen. When God shows you something, it doesn't matter who or what comes. Amen. You are obligated to obey it. Obligated. What, I don't care what it is. Amen. I don't care if it's your parents. Amen. I don't care if it's your family. Amen. I don't care if it's your close friend. Amen. I don't care if it's your spouse. If it is other than what the word of God has said it to be, then it can, you have to abide by that. That's good. That's good. That's good. What happened to him? Verse 23, it came to pass. After he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way. And slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. 
and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. He didn't touch the ass, but he touched the man. Why didn't he eat the, why didn't he eat the donkey? Hey, Amen. God said, look, you didn't do what I said. Cut you off. It was that serious. You can lose your soul to somebody. You can lose your soul to something. Amen. You can lose your soul just because you change your mind. He let that prophet change his mind about what the Lord, what the, what the word of the Lord was. Don't change your mind. God, second point tonight. We want to talk a little bit about family units or marriages or in your homes. Or even close friends. Sometimes it's more than just individuals. Amen. But the enemy can present something right in your home. Amen. Even between husbands and wives. Acts chapter 5, please. Acts chapter 5. You've got to be agreement on the word. You have to be in agreement on the word. Amen. And don't let anyone agree with you or get you to agree with something that is not based on the word. It has to be the word of the Lord. Acts chapter 5. Oh God. We're not going to read the whole account here tonight. You know it well. And if you don't read it. But Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, they conspired together. And then they conspired together. Amen. And uh, Ananias came in to Peter and acted like he had sold all the land and was giving it all to the apostles. Peter exposed him. And later Sapphira comes in. Amen. And Peter questions her. He gives her a chance to come clean. Amen. And she doesn't come clean. And verse number 9. Acts 5, verse 9. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together? You agreed to this together. You were both in on this. You both knew it. You knew your spouse was off. You knew it was wrong. Amen. And yet, because for whatever reason, for love's sake, uh, for looking good, for appearances, for whatever it is, you stood by your man. Amen. But nonetheless, amen, nonetheless, you conspired this. You agreed to this together. Oh, God. Lord. How is it that ye have agreed together to tip the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet lost their soul. Lost their soul. Amen. Because someone changed their mind. Someone close to them. Someone close to them. And they did it together. You better be careful who you get in cahoots with. Amen. You better be careful what you get in cahoots with. You guys think you have the Spirit of God and you're coming together on something. Amen. We're going to just do this. Amen. The fact of the matter is you don't have the Spirit of God and they don't have the Spirit of God. That's why you came together so well. Amen. Oh, that's true. Oh, God. my God. Amen. <clears throat> they conspired to do this. They thought they were going to get away. They, they didn't do this thinking that they, this was going to happen. This was not the outcome. And a lot of people make some tragic decisions because they did it with somebody else. Yeah. They did it with somebody else. There was somebody else involved. It, they wouldn't have done it on their own. They wouldn't have done it on their own. But because someone joined up with them, someone agreed with them to do it, they did it. My Lord. Many will be lost because there were hindrances in their home. Going along with something that was completely outside of the will of God. I've known people, amen, they let worldly entertainment in their home. Oh, they let worldly entertainment in their home and that was the undoing. They lost their children because of it. Oh, brother. Amen, they lost their children because of it. They tried to get it out, it's too late then. Yeah. Amen, it's too late then. They let some things in their home that they once clearly stood against. Oh, amen, and I'm telling you, brother, I, I, I get it. It's, it's more than a TV box today, but worldly entertainment is going to be the undoing of many so-called yes. Church of God homes. Oh, my God. My God. Yes. It's still of the devil. Amen. It's still of the devil. Amen. The world is not out to entertain, entertain you with wholesome stuff. Amen. That's not their objective, and you need to understand that. Amen. And the devil has, has been so successful in, in working that in little by little. And then causing people to shift, compromise on it just a little bit. And before you know it, they can't get it out if they wanted to. There's a spirit behind that thing. Amen. And I can't think of anything that changes people's minds more. Than that medium. Wow. Oh, God. That thing changes people's mind. You understand. Do you understand why gay homosexuality has been so normalized today? You know why it's been so normalized today? Amen. Because the media has conditioned people to it. Change their mind. Change their mind. I lived in Southern California in 2007. I was very young, not the brightest. I was out there with my little picket sign. Amen. Uh, Proposition 8 is what they called it. Uh, Keep marriage traditional. The proposition to make put a constitutional amendment in the state constitution there in California to keep marriage uh, as a traditional man and a woman. Okay, it passed. 
in 2008, I think it was. It passed pretty handily. Four years later, gone. Flipped completely. Flipped completely. Amen. Not only was it overturned by the Supreme Court, but now voters in California would completely not vote for the same proposition that they voted for vote before, before, prior. In four years, mind changed. Why? They presented it. They presented it. Very careful. Amen. Your children are being exposed to things. Good, brother. Yes. And I know it. I mean, I've talked to multiple students even just this week. Just this week. Amen. Their minds have been so influenced by that thing. So influenced by that thing. And you look like, you look like you are the intolerant bigot if you so much as disagree with that. It has infiltrated the highest institutions in our land. Amen. And it's infiltrated the so-called Church of God, too. Wow, that's <clears throat> yeah. We can bring this worldly term home, we'll still act like we're one of the saints. Amen. We'll dress a certain way outside of the confines of the church. Uh -oh. Dress a certain way outside the confines of the church. Amen. Dress one way, and I, I understand there's dress clothes. I'm not even talking about that. Now, I know there's dress clothes and casual clothes and this, that, and the other. But I'm talking about some things that are absolutely immodest, and you'll do it outside of here because no one's looking. Oh, yeah. And they come to church and raise holy hands. You're out of order. All right. All right. That's good. That is good. That's it right there. Visit places that saints never went to. Visit places that saints historically never went to. I mean, and see, it just shows you don't understand the spirit behind something. You are spiritually dull if you cannot understand why saints do certain things. Right. Well, it's not in the Bible. Ooh. Well, you don't have you don't have Bible for it. Ooh. I don't have Bible for smoking crack either. <laughs> oh my God! Bring it out. Come on, brother. <laughs> I principles. Yeah, I principles. Yeah, yeah. I principles. Yeah. 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 And if I'm going to keep the Holy Ghost in my life, there's certain principles I'm going to abide by because I'm not going to offend the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 My Lord. Come on. Preach. Because people look like they're doing okay. And not, see, listen, don't think your compromise is really that hidden. People know. Yeah. People know. They might not say something to you, but they know. They know. It's not that hidden. And yet the problem is people look at other people and think they're getting by, so they think they'll do it too. And it's nothing more than compromise, compromise, compromise. Yeah, oh, Lord. Rebecca and their family, Rebecca and Jacob, conspire, fooling Isaac, trying to give him the steal in the birthright. Family influences. Family influences. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, she got her husband to partake of the fruit. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go to Genesis 19 quickly. We've got to hasten on here. We're almost through. Genesis 19. Give us a few more minutes. This is excellent. Genesis 19. Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Don't let the devil talk you out of this. Praise God. Don't let the devil talk you out of this. Don't get soft now. Amen. Amen. You've been battling for how long and now you're going to get Amen. soft? Don't get soft now. Amen. Amen. You should be revving up more. Yes. Amen. Amen. You've kept, you kept the devil on the run for how long? Amen. Keep him on the run. <laughs> Amen. Genesis 19, verse 14. We're talking a little bit about Lot. Amen. And first of all, you understand Lot didn't start out in Sodom. He didn't start out in Sodom. Real quick, Genesis, uh, what do I want? Genesis 13. Genesis 13, a few chapters prior. Genesis, Genesis 13, verse, for the sake of time, uh, we'll read verse 12. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. And we can go into the, all the ramifications. He shouldn't have been so eager to get to Sodom anyways. Amen. The disrespect, he should have let Abraham pick where he wanted that he would have done otherwise, but he went the opposite way. Amen. Disrespected his uncle, said, hey, I'll take the good land, I'll take the good place, and let Abraham fend for himself. Amen. Then verse 12, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Toward Sodom. But I want to tell you, the influence of Sodom still got to him. See, there's some things, you can start out close to it, but it will get your mind. Amen. And you'll get closer than you ever thought you would get. Listen, Lot, he went in there with his family. He didn't come out with them. Right. Right. Not all of them. Ooh. Not all of them. Right. He went there with his family, but he didn't come out with all of them. That's right. He lost some children. He lost a wife out of it. Yes. Genesis 19, verse 14. And Lot, he's trying, now he's trying to avoid, he's trying to get him out. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons of law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. Oh, now you're burdened, Lot. Now you, now the Lord, judgment's coming. Th bad things are happening. we got to get out of here. But he seemed as one that mocked. <laughs> he could, despite how serious he tried to convey the matter, they, they couldn't receive it. They just couldn't have the sense enough to understand what Lot was saying. 
but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. And when the morning arose, then the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, while he ran off, while he was getting out of there as fast as he could, while he was booking it, no, he still lingered there. He lingered. Look, God is about to destroy this city lot. It's about to be over, this thing. And he's still kind of he's still kind of lackadaisical, still lingering. Still not really. Shouldn't have been there in the first place. But Sodom got to him. Sodom got to him. Amen. I don't think it was the gross wickedness there that really got, but there was there was there was an enjoyment about Sodom. There was something there. He had an attachment there. And while he lingered, the men laid a hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Wow. Somehow Lot ended up there. When he didn't when he just pitched his tent toward there. He shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there, first of all. And out of it, he lost his wife. And he lost some other family members as a result. Mm -hmm. Amen. You understand. You shift your mind on some things. It affects more than just you. My God. If you care about your family. If you care about your children. If you really have a burden for some of your close friends. You better not change your mind. That's it right there. You better not change your mind. Oh the disappointment. When many a souls have tried to come back. Amen. To what they thought they had left. Amen. Only to see let down and compromise and change minds. My God. Last part here tonight. We'll wrap it up. We'll be done. Galatians chapter 1. As the church of God, we cannot shift our minds. We cannot shift our minds. So true, bro. But as for... We have to keep... Uh, we have to keep a steadfast mind as an individual before God. Amen. We have to keep a steadfast mind as a collective... Uh, body of Christ as a collective unit in our home, with our friends, with our association. <laughs> Amen. Understand just how influential people are. Understand just how un influential people are. And also understand your own influence. You shift, it's very likely someone might shift with you. Oh. Amen. And you're responsible for that. Oh my God. You shift your mind and you change your mind and I'm not going to follow this standard anymore and I'm not going to do this anymore. All right. You're affecting more than just you. Amen. You're affecting more than just you. You have influence. Galatians chapter 1. One of my favorite passages. We've covered it before. Galatians chapter 1. Verse number 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ <laughs> unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. And you know why some trouble you? Because you're not convinced of the one gospel. You're not convinced of the one gospel. That's why some people are giving you more trouble than they ought to give you. Amen? That's why people amen, are getting caught up in things they shouldn't really be caught up in. They should see things clear. should have a clear vision. Listen, you can call me narrow-minded if you want to. Amen. And that's fine. Amen. But I'm not about, I'm not about, amen, to budge, amen, on something just for the sake right. of sentiment. Yes. Yes. Right. Just for the sake of sentiment. Oh, I've known them for years and years. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's right. That's I have. Right. I've known them for a long time. Amen. But I, 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 I'm not, I'm not changing my mind. My God. Man. There's some yeah. conversations yeah. you're not having. Right. Right. Amen. I've gotten phone calls, amen, from other places and this, that, and the other. There's, there's some things we're just not even going into. Amen. Right. We're just not even going into. Don't go there. Amen. We're not, we're not, this, this is not open for negotiation. Oh, yeah. Well, one brother listened to a message from 1975. It's already been decided. Go listen to that one. You can tell me what you think about that later. <laughs> Galatians 1, verse... So, which is not another. Verse 7. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, Paul said, even myself or an angel, just like that old prophet said an angel told him. Mm -hmm. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, preach anything other than the gospel, mm -hmm. unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him, let him, allow him. Stop giving credence to it in your mind. Amen, amen. Stop giving, listen, some people used to, could, used to could be up here in your mind. You could hold them in high regard, but they shifted. 
and you can't keep them up here anymore. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry, you just can't. Yeah. Amen. They're not up here anymore. You and see, it's gonna be the un, it's the undoing of many. It's the undoing of many. There is a push right now. Amen. There is a push among Church of God circles to come together, lay differences aside. Amen. Editorials being written, this, that, and the other, trying to come together, trying to come together, come together, come together, lay it aside. Amen. And you know what? The problem is people are being deceived by that. My God. Amen. And there might be some among us that also could be deceived by that because people are going to think that unity and it's so good and it's so grand and let's come together. My God. It's a different gospel. That's right. Amen. It's a different gospel. Amen. Amen. If you allow credence to that in your mind, if you allow that, amen, you need to let it be accursed. Let it be accursed. Let him be accursed. Let him alone. Let him alone. All right now. As we said before, so say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, he said it twice, let him be accursed. Don't let him change your mind. Don't give him any more rope. If you see it's another gospel, if you see it's shifted, if it doesn't have the right spirit, if it doesn't have the right ring, in your mind, you need to let him go. Amen. Amen. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. How do you know it's right? How do you know what you're believing in is right? How do you know what differentiates it between everything else that's out there? Amen. I'll tell you. Paul said, for I neither received it a man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation, listen, we can preach to you till we're blue in the face. We can give you the outline of the doctrine. We can go over the heart chart. We can break out D.S. Warner. Amen. We can go over the revelation chart. We can get a restoration. We can get every chart we want to get. But unless you get a divine revelation from Jesus Christ, amen, your mind is liable to be shifted at a moment's notice. <clears throat> your prey. Your prey for the devil. Amen. You need to get to your knees and get a revelation from Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to receive something from Jesus Christ. For I neither received it a man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. You must get a revelation of Christ to have an unchanged mind. You must get something from God. The gospel which you have received, it better not have come from man. Because your mind's going to be changed. It will be changed. And you might have received it from God at one time. Amen. And that doesn't mean that your mind cannot be changed ever again. Amen. You can close your eyes and close them for the last time. Yes, Amen. Amen. If you don't have a love for the truth, God will send you a strong delusion. Good. Amen. And you'll believe something. Oh, you're going to still believe. Amen. But it's going to be a lie. Mm -hmm. Amen. The great deception of our time. Wow. We're not going to turn there. But I want to speak about this for maybe a couple minutes. The great deception of our time. Mm -hmm is that people today will tolerate anything. Oh God. They will tolerate anything but sound doctrine. Wow. They will tolerate it. You're right. They will tolerate it. Heard a preacher recently. He been preaching somewhere. Off his two left shoes. They've been talking about how they have such a sweet spirit. They have such a right. And you know that's going to fool a lot of people. They have such a good spirit. They have such a sweet spirit. They have a right spirit. They're teaching false doctrine. They've promoted, they promoted false doctrine for years and years and years. And you're tampering with that and calling it a right spirit and calling it a good spirit. When at one time you were up under an anointed word. It's not a good spirit. It's a deceptive spirit. And it's a seductive spirit. Amen. And the push for our time is unity, unity, unity. Oh, that's the cry. Listen, I'm all, don't get me wrong, that is the message, that is unity. But it's not by laying differences aside. That's right. That's right. I'm not laying any differences aside. Amen. Because I'll be laying aside what God showed me. I'll be laying aside what God showed me. Amen. We can come together on one thing. Amen. That's the word and the spirit. That's the only thing we can come together on. Amen. It's not that you seem like a nice person and you take me out to dinner. Or that you complimented my outfit. It's more than that. It's more than that. Amen. I appreciate it. You're a nice person. I work with a lot of nice people. I know a lot of nice people. Amen. I've met a lot of nice people. Doesn't mean they're saved. Amen. True. That's true. No, that's true. Amen. It doesn't mean they're saved. Amen. Nice people are a dime a dozen. 
Yes. Amen. There's some people, that's, and that's all some people want from the church of God anymore. That's all they want. They just want a good life. Uh, be around moral people. Be around nice people. Amen. People won't steal my wallet if I set it down at their house. But this, that, and the other. Well, if that's all you're looking for, amen, you're looking for something other than the church of God. Yep. Right. You can get that, that down in Babylon. You can get that down anywhere. Amen. You can get that down anywhere. But if you, amen. Amen, if you, if you want what this has, <laughs> amen, if you want this, amen, you better get Word. something deeper than that. Amen. You better get a divine revelation. Yeah. Amen. You better get a divine revelation. Amen. Amen. In closing, Isaiah 54. Not every gathering's of God. Amen. Not every gathering's of God. Amen. How many times? Well, we won't go there. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Not all gatherings are of God. Not all coming together is of God. Amen. Just because they call it Church of God, just because they call it Christianity, doesn't mean it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you have to have a certain mind to be able to see it today. I am convinced that if you don't have a mind, the mind of Christ, amen, you will be deceived. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Amen. Don't change your mind. Don't change your mind. Young people, sometimes there's a tendency to start questioning. And I don't think it's all unhealthy. Amen. There's some things you need to know for yourself. And sometimes the only way to find out is you've got to question. Amen. But don't open yourself up for anything. Amen. Because questioning is a door of opportunity for spirits. Amen. You better question with the Holy Ghost at your side. Amen. You better have a sincere, and I mean a sincere desire and love for the truth. Amen. Because there are going to be a lot of things presented to you. You have a long way to go, Lord willing. Before this whole thing is over, unless God comes back, you have a long way to go. Amen. And you have a responsibility to maintain what has been given to you. And not just maintain it. And not just maintain it. Amen. But you have to bring this thing in. Amen. You have to bring this thing in. We have to bring this in. To present the church of God spotless. Amen. Spotless. Blameless. Without blemish. Amen. And don't get fooled by every move today. Amen. Where people trying to come together and we just want to love each other. Amen. We just want to preach Christ and let's lay down our differences and it's not that important. And having the right spirit is more important than having the right doctrine and all that. Isaiah 54. Verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together. Oh, they're going to do it. Oh, they're going to come together. They're going to come together. But not by me. Mm. I had nothing to do with it. But not by me. I'm telling you every gathering is not of God. Yeah. Amen. Don't change your mind. Well, we're the only ones, and nobody wants to fellowship, and well, so be it. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Even so. Amen. I'd rather be with the people of God that are a few. Amen. To join up with something that God is not endorsing. Amen. That God is not endorsing. Amen. Listen. They're going to come together. Amen. And all this coming together, I want to know how many divine healings they got. All right now. How many manifestations of devils being cast out they got. Amen. How many, amen, how much power do they have? All this coming together, all this unity. What's, what do you got to show for it? What do you got to show for it? Amen. And I'm, I'm, I understand science, we don't follow science, but the science need to follow the believers. <coughs> Amen. We, we need to have some manifestation. We need to know that we, we need a witness. Mm -hmm. We need some demonstration yeah. of power. Amen. And all that. Amen. But what are they going to have to show for it? They're going to gather together, but not by me. Don't lose your mind now. Don't shift now. Don't let the devil change you. They shall gather. They shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Anything that is not of God will come to naught. My God. My it will God. come to naught. You give it enough time. Amen. Don't be a statistic. Another one that goes down with the ship. Amen. Don't change your mind. If God's dealt with you something, God's dealt with you about something individually, you better measure. Amen. You need to measure. And then you need to walk in the light of that. It may not be, he might have not dealt with anybody else about that. But he dealt with you about it. Amen. You're obligated. Amen. There's some things you allowed in your home, some things collectively, some associations, this, that, and the other. You're in cahoots with somebody. You know you're out of order. Amen. Straightened out. Amen. Straightened out. Amen. And you got to see this truth as God gave it. 
Amen. We have an obligation. Don't change your mind.